Today, what's hot is the Golden Globes. <laughs> and uh, he said, she said, is all about are you addicted to bad love habits? Plus, answers to your live love advice here on The, the Game, Game Over, Over Show. Game Over Show. I'm Charles J. Orlando. And I'm Lisa Stedman. This is the show that gives you real street smart love advice Monday through Friday. It is. Live every day is sometimes a little later than other times. <laughs> There's some technical difficulties, but welcome. You are here. That's what's important. Have a seat on the couch. If this is your that. first time here, we're dishing it straight. You can yep. catch us every Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. in London, and 9 a.m. In Sydney, so hello to our worldwide audience. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you being here. Last night was a great night on TV. Let's go to What's Hot. <laughs> what was on TV last night? The Golden well, Globes, right? Yeah, I tuned in. I caught it. Did you catch it? I did catch it. Have you seen the fallout from Tina Fey? Specifically, Taylor Swift. And we promised we weren't going to talk about her anymore on this show, and she keeps coming up. Well, you know, I mean, yeah. train wreck. <laughs> so it was a very hilarious little snide comment that Tina Fey made at some point during the broadcast. Well, Tina and Amy went back and forth, right? Amy Poehler, her co-host. Yeah. So yeah. they ended up with with Tina saying uh, that Taylor Swift cannot go after Michael J. Fox's son, and everybody. Amy Poehler went, said. <laughs> and, and, and Tina said, no, she needs to work on herself. And now all the Taylor Swift fans are up in arms, right? Because you can't hate on a princess, right? Sure you can. Sure can't you hate can. on a girl who gets jilted, right? I don't know. Everybody hates on Rihanna. Is this a black thing? Do we want to talk oh, about this? Oh, are we going to go there already today? No, we're just going to we, move on. Can we move on to some winners from Golden Globes? I'm super yeah, happy. Congratulations to Ben Affleck. Yes, Ben Affleck. Who won Affleck for both won. Best Director and Best Drama, Argo. Definitely. That was awesome. Who else won? Um, there were... Oh, Homeland. <laughs> right. Uh, that was a no-brainer, right? Baines. Oh my god, that show. If you're yeah. not watching, what are you waiting for? All my favorite things. Tricky relationships, espionage, conspiracy theory, Middle East. So good. Yeah. Good, yeah. good stuff. Good stuff. I want to see how this translates to the Oscars. Because some people were here, you know, like Quentin Tarantino won. Oh, he won for Best Screenplay. screenplay. Yeah. yeah, which was awesome. And I just, in his acceptance speech, he was thanking all his friends who he reads his script oh, yeah. aloud to in his process, and I thought, what an odd script to hear out loud from Quentin Tarantino. I wonder what his friends thought. Right? <laughs> I mean, they're probably used to him, but that's... And there's was... like 3,000 mentions of the N-word, yeah. right? Like, yeah. oh my so, God. interesting, Quentin. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to see how it translates to the Oscars. I do too. Um, I, I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm hopeful for my Argo. So am I. Saying. Great I'm stuff. Excited. And and you know we forgot to mention one little couple. Oh, J Lo. The hot knot couple. I yeah, mean. the hot knot for sure. J Lo's still being seen with Casper Smart, and I think he's Cas a rent to date at this point. I'm pretty sure. Well, and Casper Smart isn't that like an oxymoron as a whole? Right. Right. So. Um, no said. <laughs> period. Anyway, if you have some opinion on the Golden Globes or you think we got it wrong, head over to Facebook.com slash The Game Over Show and you can blast us and you can continue your <laughs> hatred of me for my Taylor Swift comments that <laughs> keep coming in. You know what? You can hate. You can also come and just share your love for our love of the Taylor Swift controversy. Did I tell you that Taylor Swift asked me out? I swear. <laughs> oh, I, I turned her down, but I sent her song lyrics right away. <laughs> but I'm bummed. Um, so, hey, I think it's time for He, he said, said, She, she said. said. You are funny. He is laughing at himself today. As long as you are mildly or majorly entertained by yourself, enjoy that. It's, it's self-humor. Some people have self-love. Some people have self-humor. 
whatever. But we're not talking about either of those. We're actually talking about bad love today, right? Well, but we are kind of talking about some self-love because one of the best ways to get out of bad love. But anyway, let's <laughs> let's not move ahead of ourselves. Are you addicted to bad love? So that what is, is the bad love? Today. I mean, is that an abusive relationship? Because some people like instantly go to, you know, I've been I've been hit. That's bad love, hits, right? You know. Yeah. So um, bad love does not is not equated just as abuse. So what we're defining bad love as today is love that is unfulfilling, that doesn't meet your needs, that doesn't serve you, that makes you feel bad about yourself, that puts you in a dysfunctional space, right. um, anything that doesn't allow you to be your best self. Let's put right. it that way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if, yeah. You're, if you're in a relationship that doesn't make you feel the best you can about you, then you're in the wrong relationship. And I think this is really important, you know, like, we, we're, we're street smart and we're really quirky and funny and snarky on this show. Some are quirkier than others. <laughs> Charles. <laughs> but, but at the beginning of this part of he said, she said, I want to be really clear that one of my personal goals, and I know it is for you too, with the Game Over show is to show each and every person who's tuning in and trying to get love better that you deserve the fucking best love in the world for you. It's not perfect. It's never going to be smooth sailing all the time, but... Cut down on the drama, and we're going to show you how to do that with, with each and every show. So the Fucking best love and the best love fucking. Is that yeah, it? hell yeah. All right, I just wanted to whoop, round that whoop, out. That right? deserves a game over clap. So let's game go. On. What are the top signs, right? So can I start with this one? Go for it. Okay. It's one of your faves. So, yeah. I mean, so so many people say, I've had, you know, 10 bad relationships in a row. No. You've had one bad relationship 10 times. There's a big difference. Yeah, so it's basically... Or you've had 16. <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say it again? I, you know, I wasn't going to say it. I said it. You didn't say it. <laughs> Damn it, you tricked me into that one. <laughs> so, okay, so talk us through this, because for people listening who are going, wait a minute, I kind of resemble that. Um, I, I call it repeat relationships, crappy results, same crappy results. Uh, so what's the, what's the way to get over this? Well, it's a really comfortable place, right? It's, it's yeah. not necessarily comfortable, but it's very it's familiar. Known. Yes. Yeah. It's and very familiar. And that can familiar. make it comfortable because it's that familiarity. That doesn't mean it's right. No, of course not. I mean, p part of it is identifying the issue, right? So okay. if you see the pattern of 10 relationships and it's actually one 10 times, it's really easy to see the common denominator, right? Which is you. Yeah. So when you when you look at that, you can establish what you're either doing or not doing to attract mm -hmm. these people to you. What what you are not concentrating on is yourself, really, right? And right. Making sacrifices and all those things. Right. Um, Choosing wildly inappropriate partners and always getting the same results, and then being the one who's frustrated. Well, we we chose these people, and I say the collective we because I used to be one of those girls. Yeah. Can we just call that out, right? Because somebody, oh, you can't choose who you love. Yes, you can. Bullshit. <laughs> It is a conscious choice. Bullshit. Absolutely. Yep. I mean, you're attracting exactly the person to you that you want to, and then you're choosing how you feel about them based on whatever needs are getting met. So yeah. you can you can write in and you can blast, no, you can't choose. Yes, you can. You should choose, actually. Well, you are choosing. It's not that you're saying, I think I'm going to be in love with that person. Like, it's like attracts like, right? Right. But I think you should choose, and I think you should choose consciously rather than going, that person likes me, so I'll date them, or, oh, I'm really attracted to that because it's all I've ever known and all I've ever had, and it feels familiar. Choose, ladies and gentlemen. Choose. Choose. Choose something yeah. better. Yeah. All right, so number two. Number two. This is another sign you have a bad love habit or you are addicted to bad love. And it's, you find yourself saying, and I'm going to raise my hand right now because I was so this girl. All the ones who I want to date don't want to date me. Uh, yes. And all the ones who want to date me, I don't want. And we kind of get in an attitude about it. Right. You don't want them because why? Because they're not exciting? Because they're not good enough. They're losers. And all this is is a judgment about you. Right. Well, you're playing tapes in your own head, right? Yeah. I mean, about, about how you're either not worthy or... They're not worthy of you. Yes. And so it's this constant um, conversation with yourself and then bringing it into your life, like like attracting like, that I don't deserve what I really want. I get these crappy results. And I had a friend once say, well, if somebody wants me to join their club, I'm skeptical of the club. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, think about that in your love life. If somebody's into you, do you constantly go, what's wrong with them? And if you're into somebody and they're not into you, you're constantly chasing and hoping and praying that they'll change. Well, you they'll up, change their mind about you. Well, you find worth in that, right? So if yeah. I'm really worthy of love, then I can make them want to love me. And if they don't, then exactly, I'm the loser I always thought I was. Yep. And, and it's bullshit. Here's another one for the ladies, and I'm raising my hand because I was in this camp too. If I lost weight, 
he'd magically fall in love with me. Well, now you're getting into number three. You believe you're either too old, too fat, too screwed up. You uh, fill in the blank with whatever the two is. Sure, it's it's all these stuff, right? So you always end up making these rules, right? Well, I'll, I'll do it later. I'll do it tomorrow. You do know? what tomorrow? Well, I'll find love after I. Right. You know. And right. It, get you know. plastic surgery. I gotta save up. I gotta lose, lose weight. weight. Gotta go to a fat farm. Gotta get my shrink to like shrink down this drama in my head. Gotta stop masturbating in public. Damn it! I have to <sighs> stop doing Maybe that. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> Sorry, so <laughs> sorry, Fiona. Is that our, really our wrong? producer Fiona is like laughing in the back, right? Just, I just want to throw a curveball. Do we at you. both actually do that? <laughs> well, separately. Thank God, but we, I haven't ever seen you in that. I'm not saying where I go. <laughs> so, um, but so here's the truth about that, right? Yeah. Tomorrow is just code. Oh, I love when you say this. For never. Tomorrow's code for never. It's bullshit. Yeah. You're, you're not too old. You're not too fat. You're not too screwed up. There's somebody who's just as screwed up as you are. Right? <laughs> oh, you just have to find them. That sounds a great, like a great time. Hey, but so, we're all screwed up, right? Well, That's yes, my point. Yes. And so here's here's my point in this is if you walk around saying I'm too old and I, I have a client who this happened to, she went on a date and he held up a candle at dinner to see the wrinkles around her eyes because her belief was she was too old. So her, yes, Fiona, yes, producer Fiona, this happened. Oh my God. So her reality was matching her beliefs. Same thing if you think you're too big, you're too large. Men are going to come in and for whatever reason, they're not going to be attracted to you. Maybe they'll make comments. You don't know what it is, but when you believe it, your reality will produce it. So got to switch that belief before your reality can change. I'm just blown away by that. Like he walked up and he was like, I know, like Checking he's the perfect, tension dude. In her crow's feet, like, really? come on, come on! Right, well, can you pull down your pants so we can see your penis and see if it's appropriate for right, us? And please pull that like floating waterbed out of your belt buckle so that she can see it, right? Um, <laughs> his stomach. Come on! Oh, the mystery Stand fats. Right. Well, it's not really a mystery. Fiona's having a bad time today. <laughs> Producer Fiona <Here>. is laughing. <laughs> Here's, she's just eggs us on when. when so happens. we have three more of these left. Yes. Should but we go to our we should. sponsor? We should. So we'd like. Our mother's makeup. We'd like to. <laughs> our so our, our, uh, <laughs> our sponsor today is Your Tango. Your Tango.com is a great place to go for relationship advice. Absolutely. And we're two experts there, definitely. But but you can get some really good reading. Uh, they have everything from celebrity and love news all the way out to real advice um, from people like us and beyond. Professional counselors and yep. and Coaches, marriage and family therapists. Right. All kinds of experts who can help you with whatever relationship challenge you're having. And they'll be joining us actually out at iDate in Vegas this week. Ooh, ooh. We're, we'll be, we're taking game over on the road, people. Go on the go, right? Go on the go. We'll be broadcasting live from one of the casinos out there. We don't know which one. In between <laughs> martinis, right? So, oh, snap. It's oh, going yeah. to be one of those trips. Yeah, my, you know what my favorite drink is, though, right? Um, I'm scared to ask. <laughs> the next one. The <laughs> next. <laughs> so, all right. So let's return. And he's... A, Easy, cheap, drunk. So the next one, and he's gone. Yeah, it's, really. it's pretty much. It's hilarious. Two glasses people. of wine. It's all bad. Oh please, it's one and a half. Okay, well, so, okay come on, give me something here. <laughs> shit. So number four. The fourth bad love habit that might be wreaking havoc on your relationship status. And shows that you're addicted to bad love, right? Yeah. yeah. Anytime you need a relationship. Rather than want it. Rather than want it, or as soon as you need something, you start. Like orchestrating your life based on the destination. It's, so you're no longer enjoying anything and it's about an external thing that will complete you. Yes. I always hated that line of Jerry Oh my Wyatt. God, so codependent. Well, right. You complete me. Now I get, I get the metaphor, right? Like I am me and through the extension of you, I feel better about me. See, that just doesn't, I don't know. It's, it's dicey. You know, you have to have enough of you, right? To want something to share it with instead of having something else equal you yes yes i like the way you put that i'm still thinking about how tom cruise you just don't complete me i'm sorry i i know it's breaking your heart but you don't okay moving on hey tom taylor swift is the swift single now so i'm looking um, to audition for a girlfriend position <laughs> uh, anyway yes no, 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 moving on. on the fifth bad love habit um, that you that that shows you might be addicted to love. Charles is losing it. I got it. I got it. People, stay with me. He's losing it. Um, <laughs> you were so burned by a past relationship that you've kind of permanently shut down. There's a massive fortress right. around your heart, and you can't. You're not letting anyone in. We well, wall it all out, right? Because wa- it's safer. Wall it all out. Exactly. That's yeah. what you do. 
But here's the um, result of that. You don't get to, to have love. You get to believe that whatever the story was about what happened is true for you forever. Yeah, and it's true for everyone you meet. Yes. I can't yes. count the number of women that I've come in contact with, men too, that say, all men are shit. All women are yes. sluts. No, no, no. Boo to all, that belief system. Yeah, I, what they mean is all the people they've been with are garbage. Okay. I get that. But I don't even, that's not even necessarily true. No, it's not. But it is the belief system they're walking around with. Which is, a, which I, I don't agree with. I, I agree yeah. with you. Like, it's yeah. not necessarily true. But it does show that, that you know, it's not everyone, right? I mean, it's, it's a subset. You're the common denominator in that yeah. scenario. Uh, one of the things I say is um, you don't have to move on, but you get to move on. But it's a choice. It's a totally conscious choice to say, yes, I was burned in the past. Yes, I am I got really hurt. Yes, it took a long time to get over. But what if you choose today to start letting that go right. and changing the story? And not just looking at the past and seeing how it sucked, but looking at it and going, well, what could I do better next time? What could I learn? Maybe I need to learn to choose better. Maybe I learn, need to learn not to put up with so much crap in a relationship. Maybe I need to learn to cut my losses sooner. Well, and maybe I need to do some work on myself, right? That too. You know? That too. Absolutely. This isn't a what my experience. Well, we talked yeah. about this pre-show, right? Like, you got to know who you are and you got to know where you're going. And then, you know who's going with you. So, who you are, self. Right. Where you're going, what you want out of Destination. life. Destination. And then who's going with you becomes a choice. Okay. Instead of a, a decision that you make based on the best options kind of falling in your lap available. Okay, so conscious choice is really the key to this. Conscious choice yeah. to move on, conscious choice to who you choose to be on the journey with you, and a conscious choice to heal your own stuff and get to know you, and that's really the first step. Yeah, and let's, I mean, the reality of it is that whoever you choose to go on the journey with you is going to be a big source of either your happiness or non-happiness for the, for the duration of the relationship. Word. So what, what are you doing? Why, why, I mean, choose why wisely. Choose, why choose someone who makes your life harder and doesn't make you feel good about yourself? That's really the bottom line there. And that's actually a perfect sign of being addicted to bad love is if you consistently choose someone who makes you feel bad. And it's not their responsibility. It's not solely on them. Because you can let, like if you're really wounded or really screwed up or really in a place where you haven't worked out your shit, anyone can make you feel bad because you're constantly reacting. Right. But this is if you've worked on yourself and you're out there and you're meeting people, there will be people who, who will try to tear you down. You just walk away because you don't have bad love habits anymore and it doesn't align with what your beliefs are about love. Smart lady. Listen. Done. Done. I'm sorry, what did you say? What? Listen to me. Hmm? I might be smart. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Wait, did I say that out loud? No, oh. you heard it here. <laughs> All right. The, uh, the sixth and final... Right. Sign you might be addicted to bad love. You are so hung up on the story of you and your ex that you can't move on because you're still living out that story every day, even though he or she is long gone. Ex on a pedestal. Yep. Ex on a pedestal. Dot com. I don't know why I said that <laughs> excitedly because ex is on a pedestal. Suck. Kick that ex off the pedestal. Yes, yeah. I did show you my fabulous shoes. Um... Aren't they great? I love these shoes. They're, they're, Can, they're very cute. Push your ex off the pedestal. Let them go. Well, yeah. I mean, they're an ex for a reason, right? So right. you can. That's part of the grieving process. You can concentrate on all the positive things in the relationship, and then you'll grieve and wonder what you did wrong and blame mm -hmm. it all on yourself. Or you can look at it globally that something happened between the two of you. Yeah. You and know? it wasn't wasted time. Next time, could you cut down on some of the wasted time if you feel like you stayed too long? Sure. But if you think your ex was the one and you've got them on such a pedestal and every person you meet, if you're meeting anybody, doesn't measure up, you're never going to have another healthy, happy relationship ever. So be really realistic about your ex, both the good and the bad. Take them off the pedestal. Love yourself. Get okay with you. And move on. <laughs> we are being demonstrative today. <laughs> and NC. <laughs> If you have other tips and tricks about bad love or you've yeah. been in a bad relationship, we want to hear about it. Head Absolutely. over to Facebook.com slash The Game Over Show. Click the little message button and we'll get it here. Maybe we'll read it on the show. And that brings us to Street Smart Love Advice.
questions, and we hopefully have some answers and some advice, yeah. right? Yeah. This is the second half of the show we always do, or we mostly, most always do, live love advice. And this is what you write into us. We like to give you the straight up street smart truth. So don't brace yourself, but get a pillow and hug it if you need to. Please Just do. Saying. Well, this first one isn't necessarily an advice request. This is somebody who wrote in off of something that Oh, yeah, this wrote. was good. Yes. Yeah. So, M, hi, M. Hi, M. Um, so, we had written something that talked about cheating being the result of a relationship that was secretly already over. This is right. a few weeks ago. Right. Um, because there's always warning signs. And so, M wrote in and said, I disagree that cheating is the result of a relationship being over and that no one wants to acknowledge it. What happens when everything is damn perfect and they cheat and ruin the best marriage? Well, is it really damn perfect? <clears throat> well, not if they're cheating. Um, it couldn't have been that perfect, right? So, what, I mean, there's firstly, there's no such thing as a perfect relationship. And if you, and, and so, I, I just want to temper expectations here for a minute. If you feel like the relationship was damn perfect, one of my questions to you might be, what were you overlooking? Yeah, no doubt. There, there are usually ninety nine times out of a hundred, there are red flags and signs yeah. of a relationship that's not working. Do you get those psychopath slash sociopathic people who are all about themselves and they hide it forever and then all of a sudden you get broadsided with the fact that they have six other families in three different countries? Like, yes, that yeah, happens. Yeah, that happens. Absolutely. And could this be what you're talking about here, Em? I don't know. You didn't give me enough detail with what you're describing. But 99 times out of 100, those warning t signs are there. Yeah, and They're I want to point out, Em also says that if everything was damn perfect and they cheat and ruin the best marriage, well, it couldn't have been the best marriage if cheating was going on, number one. And number two, if, if it was the best marriage, you could overcome the cheating if you chose to. Wow. And there it is. I have nothing else. That's it. <laughs> okay. I am rendered, rendered speechless. speechless. <laughs> did my job for the day. So, M, good luck with that. I know it's not easy to hear that. I know that's not necessarily what you were hoping to hear. Yeah, and if you have, uh, if you want further clarification or if you have random profanities because you still disagree, send them in. Uh, this one goes out to E. Hi, E. E says, I am 22 years old and I've recently split up with my ex. Uh, okay. We had an on and off relationship for four years. Okay. They have a two year old child together. Okay. And she is due to have his second child this month. Oh. But. Okay. He's constantly been cheating on her. That's a big but. Constantly is a big word. He says he loves me and doesn't want to go back with her. Sounds like a repeat cheater with the same lady on the side. Boom, um, game over. But he always goes back and she hassles him as well. So this guy's like running in between He's two women. pinballing between two ladies. I ask myself, why does he keep doing this to me? No, 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 no. You're allowing it. You're doing it to yourself. You're doing it to yourself. Yeah. Um, I'm so good to him. I do everything for him. I never lie. I never cheat. This well, good for you, but he's not returning the favor. And he's quite lazy. I take him back. All right. What kind of guy Stop is it. this? Stop Why it. are you in love with this person? Okay. Game over. All right. He's lazy and a cheater. Game effing. Game fucking over. Right. Marriage material. Right. Except oh, not catch. at all. What I mean catch. by marriage material is no. Right. <laughs> so not like, marriage material. Absolutely game over. The only way this pattern's going to stop is if you and the other lady stop him from doing it. So here's something that I think is, is an interesting scenario in this scenario is it could be that both of these ladies really want him to themselves, but they they wouldn't walk away because then the other lady would get him. Right. Right. So it now, ends up a pissing it, contest. But it ends up also a massive game over for both of you. I mean, this guy is so working for him. Why is it working for you? Why is it working for this other lady? I don't frankly care about the other lady right now. I care about you. You have a yeah. second kid coming. Honey, game over. Game over. Game over. It's been four years and he's cheated so many times. Like Boo. an act of infidelity, you can get past. All right, yeah. we've belabored the yeah. point. No, get out. Get and out love quick. yourself enough to show your kids a better model, a better way. Absolutely. I mean... Ugh. If not for you, for the kids. And the guy, like, I want him to write in, right? Nice job creating a family that you're not going to be a part of. Lazy cheater. Way mm. to work it. Way to work it. This one goes out to D. Hi, D. D says, what's your thoughts on age differences? Ooh. I'm a woman and, eight, and 18 years older than my husband. Oh. Everyone thinks he'll leave me when I'm 50. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I just take it day by day, and day by day, I'm feeling in love. Well, I'm glad you're feeling the love. Is it new? Because day by day makes me feel like it's 
new, but she's married. Does she not trust it? Uh, I got I, some questions, Dee. I, I think her friends are trying to control her relationship. Like, you know, you better be careful. He's younger than you, and he's going to find somebody younger with, you know, whatever. So here's the deal, right? Love doesn't know age. Age yeah. is just like whatever number you want to put to it. Yeah. How old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? Right? That's really the question. Is that How old would con- you be? <laughs> You'd be like 20. Like, yeah. Yeah. Probably. I'd be probably. 80. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, with the Geritol over there in the studio, like, oh, that's Fiona's. I'm sorry, um, but but no, the I mean <laughs> the Vix, the icy hot, the hot flashes. Oh, not yet, <laughs> thank God. I wish I was hot. It's freezing. If anything falls out, it's gonna be bad. All right, so look, my stuff strapped in. Here. <laughs> you worry about your stuff. <laughs> so here's the deal, D. Like it. it the age is just whatever number you want to throw to yeah. it. Yeah. If it if the question is what are our thoughts on age differences, age is not the issue. No doubt. And if you ever like listen to one of your friends, I hate when women do this, especially yeah, women. We sabotage. Well, yeah. And then you break up with them, and six months and later you hear you'll hear from one of your friends like, "Oh, he was so nice. I liked when you guys were together." Damn it. Really? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Um. But I want to go. Oh, I had a thought, and now it has escaped me. Okay. So D, if it comes back to me. I'm writing you. She's going to just interrupt the show plainly. Watch this. We're going to move on to K, and any minute we're going to be back to D. Hold on. <laughs> he knows me so well. And now you know the show's live, right? Okay, this goes out to K. So okay. bottom line with D, don't let your friends control. You decide what love is, mm-hmm. and you're, oh, you're good. Here's what I was going to say. Told you. <laughs> um, it's not so much age as it is life experience. So if you are 18 years apart and you are simpatico, Great. If you are 18 years apart and in dramatically different places, not so game on. So just a thought there. But if you're happy and you're feeling the love and you're in love, go for it. Definitely. That goes Thank for you. anybody Ooh, who's in a, in, a, in a fall spring relationship or, you know, not too spring though, right? Never what would mind. be too spring? Like under the age of 18. Oh, boo. Game over. Yeah. That's like, a whole different show. No. 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 K. Hi, Kay. Asks, what do you do when the problem isn't the man, it's you? Ooh, I'm intrigued. My constant nagging, my need for affection, especially, well, listen to this though. Need for affection, kissing, hugging, and driving, it's driving a wedge into my relationship. Okay, well, at least you're acknowledging it. That's really important. I can recognize it, but I don't seem to be able to avoid falling Uh, in the same old patterns of behavior. Out of control. But, well, maybe. She's asking about needing affection. Nothing wrong with that. No. The worst thing is that it mirrors the worst behaviors of both my parents. Her nagging and his sex mania. All right, so he doesn't want affection, but he wants sex? Or maybe she's got sex mania, and she's feeling like her need for affection is somehow like his sex mania, her dad's sex mania. Interesting. Okay, we want you to write back in. Yeah. Here's where I come out, though. Like, so people internalize love differently. They receive it, and they recognize it differently. Okay. Well, some people are raised in a house where... You go every Christmas and buy a whole bunch of gifts. They don't have to be expensive. Mm-hmm. Just lots of stuff under mm-hmm. the tree. Mm-hmm. That's love. Okay. Some people want a Mercedes every month. Some people want a glass of chocolate milk and cookies every Saturday because it's how they feel valued and they want your time. I like that. Some people create crafts. Like, I mean, there's all these things. Okay. That different come into ways, play. different identifiers for love. And, well, and so it's it, it's not only how they give it, but it's how it's received on the other end. Yes, okay. Because if, if I'm a Mercedes Benz guy and somebody. And you're getting cookies and milk, boo! That shit's not going to work out. Oh, it's like, man. You know, right. So I, I think there's two things here. Like, okay. there's, there's her identifying and being plagued with her parents' ghosts. Yeah, I'm feeling like there's some baggage and some judgments. That I'm more concerned about the judgment at this point. A lot of judgment about your parents' behavior and how it's wreaking havoc on your relationship. Some may be true, some not so true. Right, definitely. But the other thing is, if you're needing something out of the relationship and you're nagging and he's not providing it, that's a red flag. And you guys need to identify what that is. If it's the way you're interpreting love and it's not being received because it's not being given, it needs to be talked about. But it's interesting because she says, I see here, I found a really sweet, smart guy, and I keep waiting for him to F me over, and I keep underestimating his intelligence. So I think there's a lot more going on here, um, and I would love to hear more from you, number one. Number two, really look at that those beliefs. Where are they coming from? Are you actually modeling that parent behavior, or is it just fear-based? Are you not getting your needs met? Can you ask for them in a way that doesn't feel naggy? Or do you feel like a nag just for asking for your needs to be met? 
So it's kind of checking your own behavior and checking his behavior. Okay, please follow up with us. Yeah. We'd love to know how that yeah. turns out. Uh, if you have a question, please head over to facebook.com slash the game over show. Click message. We'll get it here. We'll leave it, read it live on the air mm-hmm. and uh, keep you anonymous, yep, obviously. Yep, always anonymous. Tomorrow? Tomorrow is online dating ruining your chances at monogamy. Mm. And you know, with, with how easy it is to kind of hook up online. It's tricky. Join us tomorrow. Until yeah. tomorrow, this has been the Game Over Show. I'm Charles Gerolando. And I'm Lisa Stedman. Enjoy yourselves. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.